For the Quantum Grammar Shoot 146. That's right, I've done 146 of these puppies. And it's 146 episodes of the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knife and Matthew Colin Glass. Full stop, you may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will be taking a look at various topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar. <clears throat> the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffel Wynn, Colin Miller, full stop. I wonder if I should start saying colon David hyphen Wynn degree colon space Miller, full stop. Something to consider, but it's already a mouthful. I've been doing these uh, podcasts a little more frequently because they're easier for me to do than creating an actual video video uh, because I don't have to edit the audio. All I had to do is put up a couple pictures, put up the beginning and ending uh, pieces, and then lay this audio over top of it. And, of course, the music at the beginning and the end. But it's easier than going through and editing a video. So that's the reason why I'm doing this more frequently. And I just want to address a couple things out there that I see going on. <clears throat> a few observations from my perspective. And also to give you a sense of myself personally, how I handle things, and how I look at things. Over the years, and I mean most recent years, past couple years, you know, when I began this, and I began teaching in 2018, I was a very different, had a very different approach. Because I, I had been a teacher in different ways before that, you know, training people in work situations to do jobs, but I'd never taught grammar. And so I had to kind of figure that out. <clears throat> and when we teach and when we do things like that, we usually follow a template or an example that's set by someone else. In this case, I tried to amalgamate what I saw David Wynn Miller doing. Uh, I even took some things from Russell J. Gould, Marcus Sean Christopher, and more importantly, my grammar tutor, my main grammar tutor, Colin Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tahiti Colin of Harim. He was the biggest influencer on my teaching style. And I always remember the balance of the honor and the grace with him. Because he's the one that brought that and was telling me, you know, advising, not telling me, but advising or suggesting that while teaching, I try to concentrate on what he called grandmother energy. Because there was already too much grandfather energy in that domain, in the quantum grammar domain. And you will see that if you look at it on the Internet. You see people, especially like Russell J. Gould or even the, the Jason Paul Grievous character. They use a, a tough guy type of persona. At least that's my perception. And you can't tell me that you don't see that in Russell J. Gould in some of his videos when he starts swearing at the camera and cutting a promo like Hulk Hogan, brother. <laughs> you, you, you see the aggression there, the male energy. And that's cool. You know, for people that are into that, that might fill a void in their life. And so they're attracted to that. And Grievous, um, he sort of does the same thing, but from a different angle. He still threatens, you know, I've seen him threaten people on camera. 
telling people, you stop and correct. You have until this day to stop and correct, or I'm going to do this, that, or the third. Folks, I can guarantee you, 99.9%, you cannot find a video where I'm threatening anybody, where I'm specifically threatening someone that I'm going to do something to them, or that I'm specifically ordering someone to stop and correct or commanding someone to stop and correct. I guarantee you can't find a video of me doing that. Why don't I do that? Because, number one, the grandmother energy uh, suggestion that Raven gave me many years ago. And also, because that's fiction mentality. How long have we gone in a system that might makes right? Where you're forced to do things. Where you're being yelled at. You're being screamed at. You're being told negative conditions of state. Thou shalt not. Don't do this. Blah, blah, blah. And I I personally, I just, that whole thing just, I shut down over that. I'm like, now, as soon as I start seeing that, I'm like, I'm out. I don't want anything to do with that authoritarian type of mindset. Now, on the other hand, In the past couple of years, in my old age, my patience for folks who are seemingly either consciously or unconsciously trying my patience, my patience for that type of thing has has run short. I know there are folks out there that think that they're like maybe being cute with me. They think they're being cute, playing games, playing word games. And you'll see these types of people in the comments field. If you see I publish their comments, they usually are the ones that publish massive comments. Like they really type chapter length comments into the comments field. They invest a lot of time and energy into trying to say something. And usually those folks, nine times out of ten, usually those folks are violating the terms and conditions of the community guidelines. Because they didn't read them. Because usually when someone leaves a long comment like that, they are promoting a belief system of theirs, trying to tell me why they're right and I'm wrong, or trying to maybe teach me something, which I didn't ask anybody to teach me anything. This is a grammar channel. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, welcome aboard. If you're here to teach something, Go somewhere else to someone else who wants to learn something from you. And I don't mean that in a harsh way. I'm being straightforward. A lot of you aren't used to that. A lot of you aren't used to that. I'm not saying I'm not open-minded. What I'm saying is, contract is by consent. If you're saying something, or I see something that I'm curious about, and I want to learn it, then I will approach you or whatever to learn about it or find out how I can learn about it. It's not a place where people can, this channel is not a place where people can come to make offers of teaching me something because that's not the purpose of the channel and I never said anything like that and this is my channel. This is not a, hey, Please, share your personal belief systems and religious beliefs, political beliefs, biases, all your opinions. Go ahead. Share them all because I want to learn them. Uh, that, it's not that, this is not that kind of channel. And I think, and I can answer my own question, I always wonder why aren't there more subscribers here? Why aren't there more people wanting to learn this grammar? And I... I've answered my own question over the years. It's because of the way it's presented here. It's because there's little to no small talk here. It's all business. And people just don't like, you know, the majority of people just don't, aren't, aren't uh, used to that. They'd rather pity pat around something. They'd like make jokes, joke around, which is cool. I joke around too. But I always get back to business right away. Now space is limited. Although the continuum continues, 
I don't know where it started, I don't know where it ends, but it does also have a limit to it, which we have imposed upon ourselves. So my patience for game playing <clears throat> is very short. I reserve my patience for the folks who I think would better benefit from it, i.e. my serious students, the ones that have actually contacted me, the ones that have actually taken workshops, the ones that have actually <clears throat> shared their full correct name with me, had video consultations, and we're building a trust count. These folk, And this has amazed me since the beginning. These folks that email me and speak to me as if I'm their long-lost friend, they tell me all sorts of personal details about their lives. They tell me all sorts of, well, I'm, the way I think is this. And the reason why I think that way is, is this. And like I have any investment in who or what they are. Or to put it another way, like I care about a total stranger and their personal life. I appreciate people sharing things like that with me. I appreciate and honor someone sharing personal stories, but I don't understand it. I myself would never email a total stranger and give him personal details about myself. Never. Perhaps I come from a different era than these folks who are so willing to spill the beans. So when someone does that, <laughs> to me that's a red flag about their character. A mild red flag, but a red flag nonetheless. You got to be careful what you say to folks like that, because they most certainly will repeat what you say. And you can take that however you want it. But my patience for that type of thing is, uh, is very little these days because I'm just looking for folks who are serious about learning the grammar, not folks who are playing games, not folks that say, yeah, I, re I really want to learn this and I'm going to sign up for workshops. And they leave me a big, long message saying how they're going to contact me. They're serious. They're going to help the world. They're going to help people, blah, blah, blah. And then they never and they disappear. I've seen it time and time and time again. It's sort of like the, the M&M curse in the UFC, in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. If you see a fighter walk out, their walkout music is M&M, they're most certainly going to lose their fight. It doesn't matter who they are. It's called the curse of M&M. If you write me an email or a comment telling me all about how serious you are and how you're going to contact me and you're going to take workshops can pretty much guarantee the opposite of that is going to happen. So keep that in mind if you're listening to this and you're considering doing that. Think twice about it. Because you're probably going to jinx yourself. Now I used to think, why wouldn't people want to learn this? Why are people so, you know, reticent about it? Hesitant. You would think more folks would come here. More folks would promote this, share this. But I know why. Because when people see the amount of work that it takes to do this, it probably intimidates them. Perhaps scares them. Perhaps they feel inadequate. Like, they can't do it. Now, I'm not here to give you a pep talk. I'm just laying on the table what I see. If someone thinks that, then they're probably not ready to learn it. They're not willing to do what it takes. Only those who are willing to do what it takes put in what, you know, the necessary investment as far as value, now space, energy, emotion, all that stuff, intellect. If you're not willing to do what it takes, then you're not going to learn it. If you're not consistent with it, you're not going to learn it.
Folks, I have a lot of time on the water, so to speak. I will bet you, I, I will make this claim out here right now, right here, right now, to you, the listener slash viewer, that I have more teaching hours, teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, than anyone else on the planet, than anyone else on earth. I have more teaching hours. Bet. I bet you cannot name one individual who has more teaching hours than me. And I bet if you do name that individual, I bet that you can't prove it. I bet it's just based upon an assumption. Me, I can prove how many teaching hours I have exactly. Although I have not uh, done that, you know, I have not added them up. I have them all logged and recorded. I keep meticulous notes of everyone or anyone that I have ever had a consultation with and or done a workshop with. Correct names, dates, now space, continuum locations, i.e. the time, how long it went, and my assessment of them as a student. All these notes taken from people over the last seven plus years. So I could actually go in there, into those records, add everything up and tell you how many hours I've been teaching correct sentence structure. And I can guarantee you it's more than anyone else on the planet. And moreover, I can prove it. I bet they can't. I could be wrong. Of course, I'm always open to being wrong. That is a claim I'll make and stand by. And you're more than welcome to challenge it. Anybody out there. Also, one other thing I wanted to bring to the table here. uh, The second topic I want to talk about is pedigree. I talked about this in the past when uh, these things were being questioned years ago. What do I mean by pedigree? Pedigree just means... Where, like, the history of where something originated from, loosely. I would use that as a, uh, as a meaning for it. Like, when you get a horse or something, there's a pedigree. Who the horse's ancestors were, what line they come from, so on and so forth. Well, I have a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar pedigree. I can tell you exactly who I learned from and pretty much what I learned from them on my journey. To start with, back in 2017, in the summer of 2017, I discovered Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher. I started watching his videos. Now, back then, he wasn't really talking about Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, as he was talking about parse. And then I began taking his course. And from him, as far as the grammar goes, what I learned was how to parse words. And then through him, I started watching David Wynn Miller videos in 2017. And then I found out about David Wynn Miller's website and his book. And then David Wynn Miller had his phone number on his website, his cell phone, and his home phone. So I began calling him and speaking to him. And I didn't really learn personally things about grammar from David. More specifically, I I would ask him about different scenarios. For example, the getting a, a fiction passport and how the live life claim would or wouldn't work into that. Like he, he answered those types of questions. And also about capitalization, I guess, yeah, I did ask him some questions like that, which I have on file. Um, But of course, from David's videos, I learned a ton. Then, I began watching Russell J. Gould videos, because that comes with the territory of the David Wynn Miller videos in 2017. And I didn't really learn anything about grammar from Russell, At that point, 
I more learned about postal mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, shipping mechanics, those types of things. Because that was more of his area of expertise. And a little bit about what he calls judge mechanics. Now, later on, I did learn about colon mechanics from Russell. And that's how I came up with the, uh, how Raven and I both came up with the, what we call the quantum grammar shorthand system, where you just use full colons and strategic spacing to write out a correct sentence structure, rather than writing out all the for this, of this, with this, and by this. And that came from Russell in his Reno seminars, pointing out, try, trying to, I guess, create a continuance of the evidence against David Wynn Miller to show that David Wynn Miller was not correct with his grammar on certain things, where he pointed out specifically the Federal Postal Court stamp with David Wynn Miller's name on it. He said, look, you see a full colon, and then you see for the Federal hyphen postal hyphen court. So he was pointing out that the full colon in front of the for the was not correct, that you wouldn't do that because the full colon is supposed to mean for the. But in this instance, and he said this, you put the full colon and then a space and then the next word, then that means of the. Because the first position lodial phrase of a correct sentence structure is supposed to be for the, and there would be no space between the colon and the first word. And I was like, bang, a light bulb went off in our heads. And that's when we realized this is the correct way to write out, to, to use the punctuation. For the and by the, if a colon is to represent either for the or by the, there is no space between that colon and the fact that it's positioning. Of the and with the, there would be the colon and then space which means the colon would be tied up against the last letter of the previous fact and then space and then the next fact. It's just like your name. It would be colon, Jason, I, and Matthew, colon, space, glass, period. For the Jason, I, and Matthew of the glass, period. That's how a name would be written. And so that's how we figured it out. And the, number, and the spacing is determined by where the fact is in relation to the verb. And also, always, 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 always having two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. No more, no less. If there's to be a verb in it. If there's no verb in it, then it's not a sentence because there's no thinking in it. If there's no verb in it, that means it's a title or a name or something. So I did, I, I wouldn't say I learned the colon mechanics from Russell, but he inspired my closure on the colon mechanics. I did ask him to actually explain also why the uh, lowercase letter and a middle name after the hyphen would be wrong, like Mark lowercase k, like why that's wrong. And he just said it had to do with rule one, rule equal, but he would not explain it to me. So I had to go figure it out for myself, which I did, and I published a video about that. But I did publicly give him credit for the inspiration for that also. But the rest of it, especially the syntaxing and the sentence structure, all due credit goes to Colin Raven, Ivan Farhad, Ivan Tohidi, Colin Efren for that. He did, he was 75% of my teaching. So that's my pedigree, folks. That's my pedigree. Who I learned from. Does anyone else have a pedigree out there? Anyone out there that's teaching, have you seen their pedigree? And can their pedigree be certified? Like, I can certify my pedigree. And the only one I have to really certify is uh, Raven, because if need be, I can reach out to him 
And he'll say, yeah, I taught Jason. I was his teacher or something similar. I'm not trying to make assumptions, presumptions for Raven. This is my guess as to what would happen. I'm capable of doing that. He's able to certify me as a tutor. Or, or I mean that he taught me. And also as a tutor. Because he did help me get, me get my start. Can anybody else do that? Can, for example, Jason Ball Grievous, can he certify how he learned? Like I can certify that I learned from David Wynn Miller through emails that I have on file, through text messages that I have on file, from telephone calls that I have recorded. If need be, I can share that evidence. I have evidence of that. I have evidence of the emails between Russell J. Gould and I, where he was talking about different things that I just shared with you. I have evidence of my relationship or, uh, you know, interactions with Mark Sean Christopher back in 2017, 2018. I could pull that up as well. I can certify everything that I say. Can anybody else out there? Does anybody else have a pedigree? I don't know. I don't think so. And to bring it back around to the original topic I was talking about, these folks that leave these massive comments on my YouTube channel. And I don't know if they're trying to establish some sort of imaginary position so that I'll talk to them or pay attention to them or something, which I give the very bare minimum to folks like that because to me, they're not serious. And I've said this over and over again. The YouTube comments field is not a place to get closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. If you're serious about it, you will email me and apply for a workshop. Period, end of story. And if I tell you that in the comments field, if I say, if you want to learn this and you're serious about it, email me, blah, 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 include your full correct name, I'll set up a video consultation. If I tell you that, and then you still continue to comment and do whatever you're doing, then that tells me you're not serious. That you're just here for attention or who knows whatever else. You have your own agenda. And that agenda is not to learn the grammar. Bottom line. And again, a lot of folks aren't used to this type of speaking. Being straightforward. Not beating around the bush. Maybe you have now space to do that, but I don't. I'm here for the folks who are serious, who actually want to do something with this. I'm there for them. All you other folks, you're more than welcome to partake in the thousand or so videos on my YouTube channel that are free. Play around, leave comments. Again, I appreciate anyone who leaves comments. It helps the algorithm. I'm talking in the context of teaching and students. If your comment isn't too whacked out or whatever, I'll publish it. I don't really care what you say. If you're going to violate the community guidelines, well, then, of course, your comment's not going to get published. But for the most part, I publish 99% of the comments. I approve them. Because it helps the algorithm. All right, folks. Thanks for listening once again. And uh, hopefully speak soon.